We are going to look at this text to audio and poetry generator I built using GPT-4 and Amazon Polly to turn text into lifelike speech. We are greeted with an option to choose write poetry or read file and turn it into audio. If you select write poetry, then you have to enter a style of the poem. Here I have put in Edgar Allan Poe, number of lines to be generated by GPT-4, the genre. Here I have selected romantic and the topic could be anything words, feelings, or more. I just typed in the future and we press generate and play poetry. GPT-4 is going to create the poetry and AWS Polly is going to read it to us. Here we go, our po poem is generated. In realms untold, where time relents to none, entwined will be, two souls scarce held by fate, as tendrils grasp at shadows yet undone, the morrow tempts, but love shall bear our weight. You can also convert a file into audio when we select this. We are looking into our files folder and getting all the sample files that are in there. This is a basic implementation, so you won't read PDFs or anything like that. But then you can just select your file here and convert and play audio, just like this. Poetry, derived from the Greek poesis, making, also called verse. So we are reading the contents of the file right here. Let's review the code. We will be looking at three, di three different files. Poetry.py, which only converts, uh, only generates uh, poetry from GPT-4 and converts it into audio. For this one, you have to actually modify the code yourself right here in the messages, the style, the length, and genre. But you will be prompted to enter the topic of the poem. The second file is again, this poetry.py runs in the terminal. And the second file or poetry actually chooses either a file or poetry and the style and the length and genre is actually asked dynamically. Let's run this real quick. Do you want to read a file or turn it into audio or write poetry? When you say two, then you can actually enter the style of the poem and whatnot and use it like that. And file or poetry underscore st.py actually has a streamlit interface. The first poetry.py will be available for AI aficionado Patreon supporters. And the rest of the code is going to be available for the connoisseur level. Uh, the link will be in the description. So the first part file, poetry.py, as I said, takes in this prompt for GPT-4. The style, say historical, let's say four lines, and then a genre I just said independent. And when we run this, we are asked to enter words, feelings, or more, the topic of the poem, and then we click enter. Our poetry will be generated by GPT-4, and AWS Polly is going to read it to us. In history's fold, brave minds prevail through trial. So this is how it works. Let's take a, let's start with the simplest file and a review our code. Requirements for this initial file is OpenAI Boto3 to communicate with AWS API and PyDub to play the audio segments and whatnot. You do need to get your access key ID, secret access key from AWS. You can actually get it from your dashboard from security credentials. I have stored them in my user environment variables, so I'm pulling it from there, but you can define it here as well. You do have to. And my OpenAI also is being pulled from my user environment variables, my OpenAI API key. Then I'm defining a messages list right here with the system message being the composer poem with the following characteristics, style, length, genre, and write your poetry in the way of the best poets from history. Then we are getting a user input about the topic of the poem. Then we are appending the user input to our messages. Then we are simply getting a response from GPT-4, OpenAI's API endpoint, using those messages as our prompt. Then we are actually using API's moderation endpoint. It's really easy to use. Once we get the response, then we get the content of the response and we check to make sure that it meets the moderation standards of OpenAI so we don't get some terrible content or something. The way this works is that when you get the result, the zeroth element dot flagged is actually false if there is no moderation issues. And if this is actually true, then the moderation actually flagged it. Then we can actually check if output, meaning if the output that is returned to us is true from the moderation endpoint from OpenAI, then we just say try again. Otherwise, we actually get the poetry from our response from our first call. So this is our poetry. We print the poetry, then we define the speech synthesis function, which will actually make a call to us using the voice of Brian 
and then this is the end output file is going to be poetry.mp3 this is the api call to the poly from aws and we get a response from aws's poly client and actually the important thing here is the engine the, there are there's actually two available voices in aws one of them is neural the other one is standard not all voices support neural implementation but brian voice does and also another thing is that another thing to keep in mind is that not all regions support the neural for example us west one does not support neural speech synthesis so just keep that in mind and in the next lines we are actually saving the synthesized speech to the output file we have defined and then we are actually using pydub to load it and then we just print the poetry has been saved and we return the audio then audio is the synthesized speech which is this function and then simply we're printing playing the poetry and then we play that audio so this is as simple as that this works great aws is quick and actually it's quite cheap so we are using GPT-4 with AWS Poly. Okay, so this file will be available at Patreon. The link will be in the description for lower tier Patreon supporters. Now let's move on to the next file. This one is very much the same, except it asks us if you want to read a file or turn it, read a file and turn it into audio or write poetry. If you do select number one, then it'll actually scan, go over the files that are in the files folder and actually it will offer you as a list in this case, if you select one, then it'll actually... Poetry, uh, derived from the Greek poesis, making, also called the... It will actually read the contents of this file. So you can have as many files here as you like. Like I said, it won't work with PDFs or anything like that, but you can modify the code to do that for you. And if you run this again and select the second option, then you enter the style of the poem. Let's say, happy, enter number of lines, four, enter genre, let's say rap. Uh, what about, what are we going to sing about? Let's say nature, They're not sing, but create poetry about. So then this goes to GPT-4, our poem gets generated. And after that, Polly, Amazon Polly is going to read it to us. Blossoms blooming, sun's a beaming, nature's happy vibe is gleaming with the rhythm of the leaves. We sway in, jiving like we dream in flutter. So this is how it works. Let's take a look at the, the very much our imports remain the same. Our access keys remain the same, except our compose poetry function, which we are defining and making the call to open AI chat completions now actually gets dynamic inputs in style, length and genre, because we are actually asking the user to enter those in the terminal. Then we are regularly appending it, getting a response. We are doing the operation moderation endpoint as well, just like before and everything remains the same here and then synthesized speech remains the same exactly as you see however here we have another function list files in directory which then actually loads all the files from the files directory we are actually defining the path to the folder right here and our main function actually asks our choices to the user one to read a file or two to write poetry and if the choice is one to read a file, then we actually scan the files and print, show them as a list to the user so that the user actually can select which file they want to convert. Then we open that file, synthesize the audio, and then play the audio. If the choice is two, then we ask for, from the user a style, length, genre, and then a topic for the poem. Then we compose the poetry, print the poetry, synthesize the speech, and then play the audio. This is pretty much it. For our third and final file of the Streamlit user interface, we do have Streamlit as a dependency. So the requirements for the first three files were OpenAI, Boto3, and PyDub, and the fourth one also requires Streamlit. You do have to have these pip installed, and we are importing Streamlit as ST. But all the code remains the same for the Streamlit interface as was in the file or poetry.py file, except here we are actually giving it a title with st.title, we are offering choices with the st.select box. And if the choice is a zero, then we do the file selection criteria right here. And we do write the text and the synthesized speech and whatnot and save it to output file. Your outputs are saved here as well. And if the choice is one, then we ask the user for a style, length, genre, and user input. And if it is generate and play poetry, then we simply compose the poetry and then if there is poetry, if the composition was successful, 
then we synthesize the poetry and do the same by displaying the audio player in the streamlit interface and also we display the poetry with st.txt so the new line elements are displayed properly this wasn't working well for me with the st.write or st.markdown but st.txt work well and after we have this file then all we have to do is create a new command prompt and then run this file using streamlit run file or poetry underscore st and our streamlit user interface will pop out as you can see it's running if the streamlit user interface doesn't pop out you can control click this or copy paste this into your browser here we can actually select to write poetry and then we can enter the style number of lines for style i again entered Edgar Allan Poe number of lines four i just said pop or genre and type anything i wanted the topic to be about pancakes so these can be anything you like really you can feel free to experiment with it it's a lot of fun i actually did a live stream the other day yesterday actually this is why i got the idea to actually enhance this code on top of what i did for the live stream i'll put the link in to the live stream in the description as well so here we go upon a morn so dreary graced by let's just listen to it upon a morn so dreary graced by golden flutters near i flipped then dipped within the skillet sinky lair these pancakes neath my earnest gaze spun unsettling truths their syrup dark and chilling etched like raven's hidden ruse so this is pretty cool i hope you'll enjoy it like i said the come more complex code will be available in patreon for higher level supporters thank you for watching and join us at our discord link will be in the description and see you in the next one